Hello, my name is Miss Sasha. I am a teaching artist in the PACE art program with the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana through the Acadiana Center for the Arts. Today, we are going to learn how to draw a Chinese pagoda. You will need some simple supplies, a piece of white paper, any paper will do, even a scrap piece of paper, a piece of copy paper, and an assortment of crayons. I have red, pink, green, blue, black, brown, and we can always make adjustments if you don't have that particular color. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need to do some catching up or you need to go grab something else. So, the Chinese pagoda actually began in ancient, ancient India. Um, they were called stupas, which means a tuft of hair or a pile or a mound. Um, they, the pagodas or the stupa is where they would hold the um, holy artifacts um, of Buddha. Um, they started out as being a bit dome-shaped and they were all over India. So as um, Buddhism started to spread across the country, the buildings uh, grew in popularity. The stupa eventually became a tiered tower with many, many roofs. So it was a new building. Um, it, it ended up being a new building style or type in China. It was called a ta. And a ta, it, it means Buddhist tower or a pagoda. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have folded my paper. <clears throat> I took a piece of paper. I folded it in half. And then in half again. This will give us four parts to work in. One, two, three, four. I've already pre-folded this one up here. So let's go ahead and get started. Get your black crayon. All right, let's find that first fold from the bottom. We're not going to go all the way across as you can see right here. Watch. Make a nice horizontal line, nice and straight. Perfect. We're going to make two little lines that go up, or two little vertical lines, and then you can go ahead and close that up. We're making the base of the pagoda right now. A lot of times pagodas are up over water. As you can see, some of these are up over cement, um, over a pond, over a piece of land. You can go ahead and color that in. Got it. Perfect. When they're up over over the water or even over the land, they're usually raised up off of the ground. So we can go ahead and, and build like stilts almost. So on each end, you can go ahead and put a vertical line on each end, just like that. And another one. Go ahead and close it up so you know where they are. Do the same thing on both sides. I put like a little extra, so I knew that that was one of the stilts. Got it? Let's go ahead and draw two more. One, two. So we have a total of four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's do one that goes across. Kind of jump through it, through it, through it, and through it. Good. Um, you can go ahead and put two if you'd like, two or three. There's really no amount that they have. Some of these don't have them. Some of these do. Okay. Perfect. We're going to go up to this make our next level. And just so you know, pagodas had many, many levels. Um, they had four distinct levels, but not all 
of the pagodas followed the same rule. So we're going to make three different levels today. One, two, and three. Now the fourth level sometimes is what they call the steeple. And some of them had a steeple and some of them didn't. As you can see, this one has a steeple, whereas this one doesn't. So here we go. Um, we're going to make like a little rectangle right here. So it's not quite as wide as our base. And we're only going to go halfway up to that next fold. So I go up, up, here's my next fold. I don't want to go that high. And then I'm going to go across. Okay? So this is this part right here. We don't need to add anything else into it right now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and add the roof. As you can see, these roofs are many, many levels. Some of them are red, some of them are green. Let's see. Look, red. These are green. This one has a big old steeple. All right, so this is how we do it. On the top of your rectangle, go a little bit out to the left and a little bit out to the right. These two little lines right here. We're going to make two diagonal lines that form this roof right here up to the fold. So we go diagonal, stop at the fold, diagonal, stop at the fold. Perfect. Now let's go across, horizontally across. We built one level. Perfect. You got it? Okay. When we go to build the second level, we're only going to go halfway up to the next fold. Here's my next fold. and We have a rectangle, so we won't go as wide as we go halfway up, halfway up, and close up your rectangle. We're making this level, right? So let's go ahead and make our second roof. We'll go a little bit out to the left and a little bit out to the right. Diagonal up to the fold, diagonal up to the fold, and across. Got it? Mine's not perfect. It's okay. No big deal. All right, let's make our third little level right here. Up. If you want to make a steeple, don't go as high. Go up. As you can see, it's starting to get smaller. Here we go. Close it on up. Got it. All right. Some of the roofs are a little bit different. Um, this one was pointy with a little circle at the top. I'll go ahead and make this one with a little flat top. So we'll go out a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. I'm going to leave room for a steeple on this one, so I'm going to go diagonal, diagonal, and I'm going to just make this one a flat top like the rest of them. And then that way you can go ahead and add a little steeple, however you want to do it. So I like to make them slightly different on each um, example. Okay? Pretty good so far. Now that we have our basic pagoda shape, we can go ahead and start adding um, some fine details, um, some doors, some extra swirls. I mean, they were heavily decorated. A lot of them had tons of gold on them, black, white, red, different shades of green, some, um, some different types of like sculptural pieces on the actual building. So again, the, pago the pagodas are full of levels. Um, the steeple signifies its most important part. It's, it's, and its impact was the most powerful. The Chinese called it the Cha, and it was mean the country of Buddha. Um, so they also, like I said earlier, called the actual building the Cha 
also. And I guess some people may refer to it as the pagoda. That's what we know it as. Um, so they have different styles of pagodas. There's the pavilion style of pagoda, which is generally made out of stone or wood. It's shorter and round in shape. Um, then we have the Le Mist. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. It has a square base with more of a dome top. And then we have this style of pagoda, which is many levels. And some of them get smaller as they go up, and some of them don't. Um, so the general basic four architectural components are the underground palace, the base, the body, and the steeple. Okay, let's go ahead add some some cool stuff um this one has lots of swirls you don't have to do swirls some of them just have a nice little curl up and you can make it a little bit darker if you'd like it's like almost like little crescent moons you can repeat that shape across the pagoda there we go Perfect. I was going to go ahead and add, uh, make this line a little bit thicker, making it slightly different from the other one. It's at the bottom of my roof. This would be at the bottom of this roof and the bottom of this roof line. If you had more layers, more levels, you could continue on with that pattern. Um, I tend to think that they kind of keep the same thing going from the bottom to the top. Here we go. Um, let's go ahead and make some um, doors on this one. I made these rectangle over here, so this time I'll go ahead and make them curve. I'll put three down here. You can add a little extra detail at the top. We'll change it up. I'll make these rectangular. Well, actually, we'll do one big one. I'll add the same detail. If you want to make yours rectangle on this level, go right ahead. And then this one, I'll keep a square. <clears throat> Use your imagination. There's no wrong answers. We're just using this pagoda as our inspiration for our drawing. So we're not recreating any particular um, pagoda. And if you look, these are some that my students did. You can see they're all very, very different. Um, I've also done these pagodas differently. Let me show you. Here's one on a very tall piece of paper. This is done with oil crayon and watercolor resist. This one is done on a larger piece of paper with um, acrylic paint. So we were able to add more of the gold. Okay. Got it? All right. Let's add um, some roof lines just so we can make sure we know that that's our roof. It kind of makes it so we it looks like the roof is maybe corrugated or has a texture. Texture is the way something feels, so we're making it look like it may have some bumps or some lines. Okay, I added some like <clears throat> fun little designs here. You can do that as well. A lot of them will have like some um, more like little design at the top. So maybe this one, I'll add these little polka dots on the edge of the roof. A little bit different here, a little bit different here. Maybe on this one, I will do the same thing as the bottom. You can switch it up. If you have another design, if you wanted to do curve lines, curve lines are fine. Zigzag lines would be fine. You choose the lines that you want to decorate your pagoda with. Great. Let's go ahead and grab a blue crayon. We're going to have our pagoda in the water, so I'm just going to add a little water line at the bottom. You can go higher if you'd like.
there we go. All right. And let's go ahead and grab green, either shade of green. I have two shades of green. Uh, you can actually use both. We'll make these grasses taller. Be behind, very tall and behind. You can come back with a lighter green. Okay. Good job. Great. Go ahead and grab your Green, light green or dark green, it doesn't matter. As you can see, I did a light green roof up here, but this time I'm going to go ahead and do a dark green roof. I'm going to do all of them the same green. If you wanted to mix it up, do one of them with light green and one of them with dark green, that's fine too. Um, there, You could even do some red ones if you wanted, although most of these are more of the dark green or the light green, just green in general. Okay, I'll give you a little minute to get all caught up with that. <clears throat> if you had more room at the bottom, you could always add a pond, and in the pond you could have koi fish, you could have lily pads, you could have a lot more foliage in it or greenery, bushes. Um, if, you, if your pagoda was more on land, you might have some more sculptures or something around the base of your pagoda. Um, some different types of trees or anything that floats your boat at the bottom below the pagoda. All right. Um, you can go ahead and grab the opposite green. So I've already used dark green. I'm going to grab um, my light green and red. So this can be done however you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and color in the part that's holding my um, pagoda out of the water. I'm going to go ahead and color mine red mainly because it's in the green grass down here. If I colored it in green, then it just wouldn't really stand out. So, there. there. Looks to be like most of them are red anyway, so that's perfect. If you were on the cement area, or if you had like these, have like a, a, a brick base, you might could do them green, and that way they would stand out. Some of these are even done in gold. So, Again, you do whatever you want to do to make your pagoda amazing. Okay, so I'm going to add some more color to my pagoda. Uh, let's see, I might do this part right here with the red. And maybe the background here with the light green. There you go. And I'm going to fill it in with the red, the wind, the doors. How's that? Okay, I'll do the next one. Maybe I'll do the background red. And the inside with the light green. If you wanted to add yellow, I know we didn't have that in our in our supplies, but if you wanted to add yellow, then you could use yellow to signify the gold that they use a lot in their pagodas. Okay? And the last level, let's see. I'll do I'll do the door red. little designs up here, the light green, 
and maybe my dark green for this right here. Okay. And my steeple, I'm just going to do my steeple all red. So it really, really stands out. You could add a little bit of black to that. Um, or the yellow, like I said, if you wanted to use yellow to symbol symbolize the gold color that they um, sometimes use on their um, pagoda. Perfect. You could always go back with more black, more green. Um, they also use a lot of white. If we had paint, you could kind of dot around the doors with the white. Um, that's just adding more uh, design, more depth, more um, fancy to your pagoda. Uh, they're really, really beautiful, and there's so much detail that you can't add enough on these little pictures with the crayons to make it uh, really, really cool. All right. The next thing that we're going to add to our background is going to be the cherry blossom trees. Um, they are beautiful, big trees with pink blossoms on them. As you can see, look at these blossoms on this tree. You get it close. See? They're dark pink and light pink, but if all you have is one of those colors, that's fine. You could do the center with red, and I'll show you how to do that on our trees. This one I made really tiny cherry blossoms, but I think I'm going to make them really big on this one. So, let's see. Let's start with our brown. We're going to make like the trunk of the tree. As you can see, look, they're huge. This one's on land. So we can't really see the whole trunk in our tree um, on this paper. So we're just going to do the best we can and make it look like it's really standing out. It's surrounding the edges of that pagoda. Okay, so what you can do first is do a brown line almost to the top and fill it in like the edge of the tree. The trunk is here behind our grasses. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Maybe this one's not as tall. Okay. Good. Make my trunk go down into the water like it's sitting behind those trees. I mean, but behind the grass. A little bit more. Great. Okay, we're going to make some branches, okay? Your branches can go all the way to your pagoda. Look, make some nice big ones first, right? I tend to think trees are made out of, like, the letter Y and the letter V. So here's, here's a Y and here's a little V, right? A Y and you could put a little V. The letter Y and a little V. And if you want to go back and make your branches thicker, then go right ahead. I like a lot of branches. Look at this tree. It's beautiful. It's full of branches, which makes it full of your, um, we, we can make it full of flowers. Here we go. that. Now that our trees are covered in branches, let's go ahead and add our cherry blossoms. Just to give you a little bit of history on the cherry blossoms, they symbolize the coming of spring or a time of renewal. Um, the actual life of the blossom from beginning to end is pretty short, so um, only about two weeks. So, you know, you need to be ready for the blossoms of the trees. You only have two weeks to see it. And can you imagine all the trees at this time being big and beautiful and pink like that? I bet it's amazing. Um, they give off, um, the actual blossom gives off a wonderful sweet aroma. And aroma means smell. So they smell really, really good, really, really sweet. Um, another thing to know that's pretty important is that they're not poisonous. They're actually often used in tea. 
and other ingredients for um, for dishes that um, they may make. So that's pretty cool. They also symbolize good fortune, and that's always good to have. So we're going to go ahead and add our cherry blossoms. I'm going to grab my red, my dark pink, and light pink. And remember, if you don't have all these colors, we're just going to make it work. So I'm going to start with my light pink, and I'm going to make my blossoms really, really big, much bigger than these. So they're like little ovals, like four little ovals. One, two, three, four. 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 I'm going to make a bunch all over my tree. They're hard to see because it's light pink. If you want to make yours with dark pink, that's fine with me. Here we go. Bunch back there. They look like this. Pretty cool. Pretty big, but you see how the edges are light pink and the centers are either red or dark pink. Any of that will do. Here we go. Alrighty. Alright, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do some of mine in red and some of mine in the fuchsia. So I have red in the center, red in the center, red, red, and then some of them I'll do the dark pink. You may or may not be able to see the difference, but it actually looks cool with a little combination of the of the two. Here we go. How's that look? If you want to add more, of course you can. I mean, look how full this tree gets. So you can cover your paper in the cherry blossoms all over. Look, I'm even wearing my cherry blossom earrings today. There you go. Centered. If you have a different way of making your cherry blossoms, that's good. That's good. There's really no wrong answers. We just wanted to make it look like it, the tree is full and maybe a little bit in front of the pagoda. So there we go. How's that look? Um, I have a little blue, a tiny blue crayon that doesn't have any paper on it. I shaded the background of my sky, but you can put any type of sky in the background that you want. You could have a rainbow, you could have clouds, you could have a sunshine, um, you could make it a night sky with a moon, um, you can make it a purple sky if you'd like. I mean anything is fine for the background. Also if you give yourself more room on the paper then you can add lily pads or um, koi fish, anything in your little pond below. And if you're on the cement then you can add whatever you want, like more sculptures or bushes or foliage or something like that. So I'm going to take my blue crayon. I've pinched it like this, and I'm going to use the side of it. And I'm just going to kind of shadow around it. You can kind of go around your actual blossoms. If you press harder on one side, it'll make it darker. All the way down to the water, maybe a little bit in here. Can you see that? Make it up. You can use a darker blue. Again, you could use orange. Sometimes a sunset is the color of orange or purple. Maybe that indicates that there's a storm rolling in. You can just use your imagination with that. So I hope you enjoy drawing that uh, pagoda. Now you can go and show some of your friends how to draw it. You can add cool things to it. And just so you know, we'll be posting a new lesson every day at 10 o'clock a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first, and second grade, each tied to an academic curriculum. You can also get these lessons on AOC as part of the Learning United program, accessible on AOC on Cox Channel 16 and LUS Channel 4. Kindergarten lessons air at 8, and first and second grade lessons air at 9. Some lessons will be in visual arts, and some will be in creative movement. Be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting programs like this, visit AcadianaCenterForTheArts.org the nonprofit who manages the PACE program. Spread the word, share our videos, and keep making art.